It gives me enormous pleasure to welcome you to IDS, both on behalf of IDS and on behalf of the DSA. So um, we're here to talk about One Health and zoonoses, but also to talk about interdisciplinary challenges and how we can use interdisciplinary development science to meet global challenges. So I started with this quote from Haas in 1992, Epistemic Communities, and I was very grateful to see that he recognized that social scientists can be part of epistemic communities, which is really great to know. Um, however, despite being written in 1992, Moran in 2014 says, well, actually, all work on epistemic communities has tended to remain natural science focused. And actually, social scientists have had very little way into these debates. So that's, that's helpful, but not, doesn't take us very far. Um, in, in 2014, Dave, um, David Molyneux wrote this article asking where do we stand in terms of zoonoses and poverty? And he argued that really what is needed to scale up public health benefits and other benefits of zoonoses studies are the top four things. I'm afraid I rather cheekily added the fifth. So he said, we have a lack at the moment, this is in 2014, of reliable quantitative data on, pub on the public health burden we need to evaluate livestock production losses and their impact on health and poverty more. We need more relevance around cross-sectoral issues for thinking about designing and implementing public health interventions. And we need to identify priority areas for research and interventions. And I added, and of course, we need to understand diverse perspectives, power relations, and politics, because I couldn't imagine not doing that in relation to zoonoses. So that was in 2014. And I think, and thinking about this workshop, that we've done inordinately well, actually, as ZELS members and working on ZELS projects. We haven't just done it alone. We've done it in relationship with other people. But there's a huge amount of work that has been done since then. And I think we can say that we have built epistemic communities on zoonoses, which do bring together natural scientists and social scientists in very, very good ways. I think that we trained a new generation of interdisciplinary researchers, and for that we have to thank the ZELS AS. We've also trained all of ourselves more. We've all learned enormously through these projects. We've um, co-published. It's not hard to find lots of articles now with anthropologists and natural scientists co-publishing in top, top journals. We've engaged with policymakers across all the projects in, in a range of different ways. We've um, introduced and debated new literatures. A lot of the stuff on animal-human interactions is new and very, very interesting. And we've advanced the One Health agenda. So I think we should all kind of say, well done on the work that we've been doing over the last five to 10 years. 10 years ago, it would be really hard to identify someone to examine a PhD on social science work on zoonoses. Now, we all know people who do it, we all know it know the communities. And we haven't done this alone. There are other communities elsewhere, outside of the UK and the States and other places that, uh, that are also working on these projects. So that's brilliant news. Um, Rabineau, however, in 2018, he argued that One Health is now very widely accepted, and that's great, um, particularly by international agents. And if you, it's very easy to find stuff, WHO, CDC, OIE, FAO, all support the One Health agenda, and that's really great. However, he argued that there's still some challenges. He argued that there's still an excessive focus on zoonoses, that there's insufficient incorporation of social science and behavioral aspects of science in One Health, and that there's inadequate incorporation of environmental aspects. And Melissa was just talking about One Health in the real world and the need to think about One Health in the real world. So some of the questions I've been asking and thinking about are how have we dealt with the interdisciplinary challenges? And that's something for discussion today. But I just also wanted to put on the table that we assume that the challenges are talking to different disciplines. And actually, right now, one of the challenges I'm grappling with is working with another anthropologist who's trained in anthropology like me, but has a very different approach. And it makes it very hard to think about how we bring our work together. So the challenges aren't always interdisciplinary. They can be within disciplines as well. And how have we managed to work in collaboration with government partners building constructive relationships, but simultaneously remaining, retaining a critical social science edge, which is always challenging and, and something I think we, we have to constantly think about because it's not easy to be critical 
but to be supportive and to work with partners. So Melissa said, as I mentioned, that you know, we need One Health for a Real World. And I've just come from the Health Systems Global Conference, which was about the SDGs and about health for all and making it accessible for all. And somewhat to my frustration, there was very, very little in it on zoonoses. And, you know, it led me to wonder how much work we, and I very much include myself here, how much work we have done to share and disseminate our work in zoonoses with our broader academic communities. You know, the fact that there was very little at Health Systems Global included the fact that I hadn't chosen to present at that conference because I hadn't linked it to that conference. And so I think that while we built an epistemic community within our own world of zoonotic studies, we possibly haven't worked hard enough to disseminate that work to our other academic communities. And I think that's where today's workshop is going to be so very, very useful. So, the Health Systems Global Conference, I think, has a heightened or hidden understanding of zoonoses. Heightened in 2014, there were loads of sessions on zoonoses, all of them on Ebola, because of the Ebola outbreak. 2018, hidden. Even the sessions that were on zoonoses were under-attended and only had one paper, actually two maybe, that did deal with zoonoses. Others dealt with things like population control and conservation and didn't deal directly with zoonoses. So how do we manage a health system that doesn't veer between those two extremes? Secondly, um, how much have we studied public sector private interests. What about those large farmers who have their own vets, who have their own food production units, who have links to government, who might even sit in parliament? How much work have we done on those categories of very powerful actors? And I, I don't know the answer, but I suspect less than might be ideal. Thirdly, we've spoken a lot about intersectoral collaboration, and of course it's really important. But at Health Systems Global, I went to several sessions on intersectoral collaboration and multi-sectoral collaboration. And most of them focused on the health system and the education system. And really for large-scale, well-maintained, established programs like NTDs, and said, this is really a problem and we haven't got it right. Which raises questions for us about how we get it right for bigger issues, more complicated issues, and more sectors. So, Finally, today's workshop is about mainstreaming zoonoses within development studies. I think it's something that's absolutely vital. We have to do it. And I'm hoping that we're going to use this time to find ways to move on and do it. Because without doing that, I think we will remain a small community that talks to each other, but doesn't take things into the wider debate. So I really want to thank the DSA for this opportunity today. And I'm not going to come to any conclusions in this presentation. I'm just going to also thank the funders that have made it possible for all of us to be in this room, not just the DSA, but all the funders of the projects as well. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much.